going to get a lot of credit if they do really well. Mm -hmm. I think he'll get the blame if they don't do well. So, I mean, he's going to have to learn to handle that. And I think uh, he's around a couple of guys that are awful good. Now, I'm not saying that Kevin isn't good, but I think uh, where maybe he got away with some stuff not playing defense on our team, I'm not sure that, uh, you know, how that's going to work in Cleveland. So I, I would guess that they're going to ask him to play more defense. And, you know, and then he's, he's foul prone. You know, I think emotions are, are definitely running high right now. And as I said yesterday uh, in my presser is that, you know, I enjoyed my six years and forged some great relationships in my time in Minnesota. And, uh, you know, for Glenn to say that, I just think that he should be focusing on the players that he just received. I mean, he has the first uh, two uh, you know, of the first number one picks in the last two drafts in, uh, you know, Andrew Wiggins and Anthony Bennett. He has a uh, another guy that can really play in, in Thaddeus Young, and I think he got, uh, you know, a lot from me. So I'd be focusing even more on that, and uh, more than anything, I'm just excited to start my time here in Cleveland, get to work with my new teammates, and, uh, you know, start with this new family here. Mm, all right. In short, Kevin Love saying politely, Glenn Taylor should focus on his team. I was Kevin Love on Mike and Mike this morning. Stephen A, I'll ask you this question. Uh, do you believe that Taylor's comments are fair or not fair? Um, I don't think I, I think they're fair from the perspective of breaking down that Kevin Love is challenged defensively. But I think that's all that's fair about what he said. I think the fact that he would even elect to make those comments uh, was beyond the pale. I think it was excessive. I think it was completely unnecessary and very, very childish on his part. And I think Kevin Love was incredibly classy um, and accurate and appropriate in what he pointed out. And I think the thing that I find amazing, Skip, is that it's amazing to me, whether it's LeBron with Dan Gilbert, whether it's Kevin Love now with Glenn Taylor, it's amazing to me that young men, young men, just relatively removed from being kids for crying out loud, have to give lessons to grown men about how to act and how to conduct yourself and how to exhibit a level of class. Glenn Taylor is upset that Kevin Love didn't want to be in Minnesota any longer. Glenn Taylor is upset that Kevin Love decided to move on and thought that his chances of winning uh, were, were in a better place. You can make the argument, as some pundits would do and others, that it's a relatively weak approach for players to try to gang up or gather together to win something as opposed to being a part of building something. But when some, what someone needs to ask Glenn Teller is this. When have you shown an ability to build anything? You rode Kevin Garnett's coattails for so many years, you almost ran him into the ground because he was the big ticket and you barely put anything around him with the exception of Sprewell and Cassell for one year where they ended up going to the Western Conference Finals. Outside of that, you were getting bounced out in the first round every year. OK, you've got Kevin Love. Yeah, six years. You didn't make the playoffs. And granted, he's a part of that because if you're a star, you should be able to at least get your team to the playoffs. But it is the Western Conference. It is tough. You do have San Antonio, Memphis, the Clippers, uh, you know, Oklahoma City, other teams, Houston now, Portland, etc., Golden State. So it, it, it's not beyond the pale to see why he didn't make the postseason. In the end, what it comes down to is this grown men refusing to show the professional decorum and the level of decency and professionalism they should they should be obligated to exhibit these guys act like big babies the second they don't get what they want when they make business decisions all the time that doesn't serve the benefit of the player kevin love is absolutely right and glenn taylor i thought was unnecessarily excessive okay i hear everything you just said but my view of these comments are that they were accurate, sour grapes. That doesn't make them any less sour. And I do not think these comments make Glenn Taylor look good publicly. In fact, it makes him look even worse than, than uh, he's trying to make Kevin Love look. But now, can we go through the points? And there are more points than we just heard in the audio we just heard. Let's take them one by one because maybe Glenn Taylor is getting a little sick and tired of the runaway hype of, oh my God, Kevin Love wound up with LeBron James. Maybe he would like to see this put in a little better perspective. And for that, objectively, I cannot condemn him. Point number one, 
Kevin Love has never played much defense. Maybe LeBron James will influence him to start playing defense, to concentrate harder on the other end of the floor, and maybe to start trying to alter shots instead of just grabbing players who get by him and fouling those players and getting into foul trouble, as Glenn Taylor alluded to. Kevin Love, as he went on to say, Glenn Taylor, has been injury prone, two broken hands while he was in Minnesota and did have a knee cleanup surgery to clean up some scar tissue in his right knee. I do think, and again, Glenn Taylor went on to talk about this, that, that maybe Kevin Love is in for a little bit of a rude awakening in Cleveland because he will be viewed, at least early on, to me, as the third wheel. He might get a little too much of the blame and not enough of the credit alongside obviously LeBron James and Kyrie Irving. Now, he, he, that's the Chris Bosh syndrome. Maybe a cup, winning a couple of rings will make Kevin Love completely okay with being viewed as the third wheel. That remains to be seen. But finally, and, and a point I've made on the show that I think we need to deal with in this context, Kevin Love has never played in a single playoff game in six seasons. And he did talk yesterday in what he called his presser about how LeBron told him, now you got to get in shape to go the distance, to play into June, because Kevin Love has never had to play into June before. And I think he's going to experience pressure like he's never felt before in Quicken Loans Arena in a postseason basketball game.